In this video, we're going to discuss the SQL Data Command object. Now, in the previous video, we talked about the SQL Data Connection, and we noted that the Data Connection was your lifeline between uh, the data provider and your application. So, for example, it's our way to contact SQL Server. But in the previous video, we really didn't do much more than just create a connection, uh, open one rather, and then close it. And, and that was it. But if that's all you do with the data connection, it would be really of no use to you. So we actually need to learn how to get information out of our data source or our data provider. The way we do that, or one way that we do that, is through the use of a data command object. Now, the data command object is almost not useful in and of itself either. Uh, you'll actually execute a command that could be an insert, update, or delete statement, and um, that's one way to use the command object, but the also the other way is to actually do a select or, or get information out, and to do that, you need a container to put that information into. And so we'll be briefly touching on um, the data reader object in this video, although I would call your attention to video 2404 about the data reader specifically so that you can learn more about that and all the properties and methods that it supports. Just be forewarned that we're going to talk a little bit more than just the, uh, the command object in this video. So with the command object, what we've done is create a quick little application here to test uh, different aspects of the command object. We already noted that there were different ways to execute commands. You can execute the type of command that brings information back, and you can stuff that information into a container such as the, uh, the data reader. Or you can also execute um, what we would term as non-query type statements, and those are things like uh, counts and doing inserts and updates and deletes where we're not expecting information back. So here we have our little application, and, and what I want you to notice first of all is that we created uh, a reference to the system.data.sql client namespace, and then I also created a private reference to a, a variable called con that is of type SQL connection so that we can connect to the database. And then in the form load of our application, as you see here, we actually created a new instance of the SQL connection object and put that instance in our variable con. And then we set the connection string con uh, to our pubs database. So now when somebody clicks on one of our buttons, we'll see various things happen within our application. So this is a good time to talk about the execute reader. Basically what we've got here is, um, uh, in this first button, is uh, setting of some properties and then the actual execution of those properties into a data reader. Now what we've got, first of all, is a command timeout. That's how long, in terms of seconds, the, um, uh, the command should wait for it uh, to finish on the server. So after 60 seconds in this case, if SQL Server still hasn't returned the result back to us, then it's supposed to raise an error of a timeout. Then we're going to set other information about the command. The command tells uh, or sets up um, what type of information that we're going to retrieve from a database. In this case, the command type is text. So we're going to actually, as opposed to creating a store procedure or selecting from a table, we're actually going to select text. And we're, so we're going to put the SQL statement in the text of our uh, application. So these two properties go hand in hand, the command type and the command text. They must corroborate. In this case, the command text is select star from employee. If this had been, for example, let's say the stored procedure, then we would expect to see here the name of a stored procedure. And then also if this had been a table, then we would expect to see from here simply employee. But we're going to go ahead and stay with what we had here, which was text. One of the most important things you'll need to do is actually tell the command object which connection to use. In this case, we set the, com the connection object to our con instance, which already has a connection to the database. And once we've done that, now we can take a look at some of the properties. So in some label controls, we simply put, for example, the timeout property, the command text, the command type, and actually what type of connection it is that we're connecting to. And then we make we open the connection to the database. Now, this is when we start getting into the data reader. Our first 
uh, type of query that we're going to that we're going to call as a select star from employees. So we're going to get results back from the pub's database. We're going to get several rows of data back, and we need to put that data somewhere. In this case, we're going to use a SQL data reader at, called DR. So we have two different um, command behaviors that we can choose from. The first one is a default command behavior. So let's take a look at that first. We'll uncomment out this code. And basically what it does is it uses the commands execute reader method and we pass in the command behavior dot default and we'll talk about that in just a moment. And we set the value of whatever is executed into our DR, which is our SQL data reader. And then we'll loop through the data reader each time um, adding items to our list box that we have here. So we'll just see a list of names appear in there. Then once we're finished, we can close the connection. Now this is important. You have to keep the connection open as long as you're referencing the SQL data reader. So if we were to actually put this uh, connection dot close here, then our application would break on this line of code because it would say that there's no data to be read. So we don't want to do that. Now that's an important distinction between a data reader and a data set, but I don't want to get into that all that right now. I just wanted to mention that in passing. And then as good programmers, we set our references equal to nothing. So let's run this first. I'm going to go ahead and select the run and see our application in action for the first time. going to pull our application into view. Whoops. I think we used the wrong application. I'm sorry about that. Let me go back to our Solution Explorer and make sure that we have within our app selected the correct All right, that's better. I give a little foreshadowing of a future exercise. So here we go. We're going to select the Execute Reader button, and after a few moments, the query is run. We can see that some of the, uh, the values of the command object were printed out, such as the command text, the command type. Notice that it's just a uh, integer value and that it was aliased with an enumeration, and that's why it looked prettier whenever we were uh, using it within our code, and now it's just a plain old one. And then we can also see the actual connection object's uh, name, which is uh, system.data.sqlclient.sqlconnection. And then this is the most important thing. As we scroll through our data reader, and we added those items to the, um, to the list control that we had on our form. Now we can see all these names here in our list control. So that's an easy way to populate our list control with data from a database. Let's go ahead and stop this and take a look at some other aspects of our application. So notice what we've done here with our first pass through this. We use the execute reader and we use an enumeration of the command behavior called default. But there's other enumerations as well that we can select from such as um, key info, and schema only. This returns back only information about the key in the database table and the schema of the database table, but not actually the results. And then there are things like sequential access, and we're not going to get into all of these, but the next one that we want to demonstrate is the use of single row. By default, all rows are brought back, so let's go ahead and type that back in here. But what we want to do is show what happens when we select the single. And so I'm going to uncomment out this code. And it looks almost identical. Uh, set the data reader, reader equal to the execute reader methods um, with passing in a parameter of single row. And then everything else is the same. What we'll expect to happen this time is that we'll execute the same query, select star from employees, but only one row will be returned. So let's go ahead and run that. And this time, notice that only the first record was put into our list box. So that's how we can modify the um, 
how the execute reader method works. There's actually a better way to do this. Let's take a look at our um, uh, at our next uh, control here, which is execute reader single result, which also uses the um, the single result command behavior, but instead of doing the loop through it, it demonstrates the use of the read. Well, this is important. The data reader's read uh, method says get the first record. So we have to call that before we can read any information out of the data reader. In this case, we use the data reader with a sub of zero, which means just give me the first value and pop it up in a message box. What we've done here is change the query somewhat. Um, where we've changed it to a select count star from employees. So what we're going to do is just give me the number of records that are actually within uh, the employees table. And then we only want one row of data back, and so we'll display that into a message box with this line of code. So let's go ahead and run this application and click the Next button. Execute Reader, single result. And notice the count is 43. Great. Okay, now there's actually an easier way to do this. Rather than using the execute reader and passing in single result and then having to go through a DR read and, and basically use a data reader object, we have a different option. And that's through the use of the execute scaler. The execute scaler has the exact same command text select count from employee. But notice that there's a lot less um, code involved. That basically, even though we've identified the SQL data reader, we don't need it. We can actually set this to nothing as well. Because the execute scaler will give us the value back from the query. So all we need to do is gather I count from execute scaler, we can get the, the count object back instead of using a data reader. Let's go ahead and run this. And select execute scaler. We'll get the exact same results. The count is 43. So this is a more efficient way to actually just retrieve one value from the database. Instead of using a data reader to retrieve one value, using the single row um, uh, uh, property that we passed in, we can just use the execute scalar method of the command object. Finally, we'll take a look at this execute non query statement. A non query is a thing, as we uh, noted a moment ago, such as an insert, an update, or a delete, things that don't bring back records to us. So here we have in our command text insert stores, and then we pass in the store ID, store name, and store address with the following values. And we'll change this just in case I've used that number before. 9920 Techie Books 1123 East Main Street. So we're going to add a new store to the store table. Here we're going to use an execute non query. And notice that it returns back to us how many rows were affected by this query. And we're going to pop that open in a message box. Let's go ahead and run this application. So we're going to click Execute Non Query. And after just a moment, we notice that our message box pops up with one, which means that one row was inserted into the database. We learned that, first of all, we need a connection object in order for a command object to work. So we have to set the connection object property. So let's take a look at our code here. Each one of our examples, one of the first things that we did was um, we set the connection object equal to our instance of the connection. Then we also needed to set some other properties, such as the timeout. By the way, this defaults to 15 seconds, so we don't need to set it. Then we set the command type. This is whether it's just straight SQL as um, 
from the actual command text, you can see that we typed in SQL into our application as opposed to using a sort procedure or uh, referencing a table. And then our command text actually has the SQL statement that should be executed. We can also retrieve all the values of command objects. So they're not just, um, uh, we don't just set them, but we can also read them and, and make decisions based on them. We have to out open the connection and then execute, uh, use one of the execute methods of the command object. And we noted that there were three that we talked about just now. There's the execute reader, and there's actually two versions of the execute reader. There's the execute reader with the default, uh, where we bring back all the records, and then there's the execute reader where we bring back only one record. Then there's an execute scalar, which is a better method of returning back just one value from a start procedure or from a SQL statement. And then there's the execute non-query, which will execute things like inserts, updates, and deletes. There's actually more to the command object, even though we spent quite a bit of time on that in this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about the parameter uh, collection of the command object. And we're going to note how that uh, we can use stored procedures and pass in variable values to that stored procedure using the parameters collection. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.